Radio. This is Pet Life Radio. Let's talk pets. Welcome to ER Vet on Pet Life Radio. I'm your host, Dr. Justine Lee, and I'm an emergency critical care veterinary specialist and toxicologist. Thanks for joining us. Today, we're going to be talking about a topic near and dear to me, the dreaded squamous cell carcinoma, or a really common oral cancer in cats. If you have a cat or even a dog, you want to tune in to learn about this type of aggressive cancer. We'll be right back after these messages. As a veterinarian, I want you to keep your dog as healthy and happy as possible. That's why I'm a huge advocate of Brockwell's Pets Pro Probiotics. Probiotics are used to help stabilize and strengthen the intestinal flora. They have a lot of positive effects on the entire body system. Simply sprinkle the desired amount on your dog's food and it can help boost the immune system, treat diarrhea and constipation, restore gut health, and lower cholesterol levels. Plus, it's vet recommended, made in the U.S., and comes with a money-back guarantee. For more information, go to rockwellpetspro.com. That's rockwellpetspro.com. Let's Talk Pets on PetLifeRadio.com. to ER Vet on Pet Life Radio. Today, I wanted to talk about squamous cell carcinoma. And this is a topic that unfortunately is near and dear to my heart because my beloved 19 and a half year old cat, Seamus, died of this really aggressive oral cancer. So what do you need to know? Well, first of all, when it comes to squamous cell carcinoma and the treatment options for it, I wanted to talk about how this is the number two type of common cancer seen in cats, with the number one cancer being lymphoma. We've talked with Dr. Sue, cancer vet, about cancer in cats and dogs before, so make sure to check out that previous episode of ER Vet. When it comes to squamous cell carcinoma, it's often abbreviated SCC. And this is actually a type of cancer that's seen in humans also as skin cancer. Squamous cell carcinoma often grows on the face or the mouth of a cat. And to be quite honest, it's a really hard and frustrating cancer to diagnose as a veterinarian because it's hard for a pet owner to find it. Now, squamous cell typically grows in hairless areas on the face, like the pinna or the tips of the ears, the mouth, the tonsils, the throat, sometimes on the nose or what we call the nasal plantum, and the tonsils. And again, this one's super hard because most cat owners aren't commonly looking in their mouth unless they're pilling their cat all the time. And cats really resent, as you know, being pilled and handled. So it's really hard to find this one. Now, I wanted to tell you guys about some of the common signs to look for because they look really similarly to a cat with dental disease. And as I've always mentioned with my previous episodes at ER Vet, the sooner we notice a problem, the sooner we can diagnose it and treat it. Now, signs of squamous cell carcinoma in cats typically include things like chewing at an abnormal angle, drooling more, licking their lips more, having bad breath smacking their lips more, chewing at an unusual angle, having some weight loss, or even having some redness in the back of the mouth or gums. Now, I told you before that my beloved 19 and a half year old cat, Seamus, unfortunately died of this cancer. Seamus had been battling chronic kidney disease for four to five years, and he was doing great as I was managing that disease. But one day, I noticed that he was licking his lips more after eating canned food. That prompted me to look in his mouth. And of course, I'm a veterinarian. I'm a veterinary specialist. And unfortunately, I notice an oral mass in his mouth. Now, I happen to be able to do an oral examination at home, but I ended up taking him to the veterinary dentist the next day where we had him sedated and biopsied. And that's where the veterinary dentist sadly told me that it looked like squamous cell carcinoma and that the average outcome was only five weeks. I only had five weeks to spend with Seamus. 
That's why I'm so passionate about telling pet owners about this type of cancer, because the sooner we diagnose it, the sooner we can do something about it. And there are some concerns that chronic untreated dental disease can actually predispose a cat to squamous cell carcinoma. That's one of the reasons why your vet is always harping on the importance of dental examinations and dental cleanings. Now, I'm not going to talk about all the different types of feline oral dental disease that cats get, but some cats can get really severe gingivitis. They can get something called feline absorptive lesions that can be really painful. And we want to make sure to treat this earlier than later because of the rare risk of it resulting in squamous cell carcinoma or looking very similar to squamous cell carcinoma. All right, so I already mentioned how squamous cell carcinoma mostly grows around the face, mostly grows in the mouth, and it has a very typical appearance. Again, because it grows in hairless areas, it often has this cauliflower looking growth. It's pink, it's fleshy looking, it's a really irregular, bumpy looking mass. And whenever we see that, we do want to biopsy it right away. And that's because it's often confused with dental disease. Now, for all you pet owners who have a white furred cat, especially with blue eyes, I want you to pay special attention, especially if you live in a warm area, like in the Southeast United States or in the South or in California, and you let your cat outside. There's some thought that white furred cats who spend more time outside end up getting damage to their cells in their body, whether or not it's from sun exposure that can predispose them to this type of cancer. There's also some thought that physical trauma, even something like dental disease or exposure to smoke can result in squamous cell carcinoma in your cat. That's one of the reasons why I'm such an advocate of routine veterinary examinations. It's also a reason why you should consider stopping smoking so your cat doesn't get cancer, but that's another story. Now, keep in mind, if squamous cell carcinoma is caught early, this type of cancer potentially is treatable, but it really depends on how aggressive it is and whether or not it spreads the lymph nodes or really inhibits your cat's ability to eat and chew. So what if your vet has found a mass or something abnormal on oral exam? There's a couple of things that I'm going to recommend. So again, one of the reasons why we always emphasize the importance of an annual physical examination, yes, even for your indoor cat, because we want to make sure we're not missing anything like this. The second thing we want to do is we want to do some routine blood work, something like a complete blood count and a chemistry panel. Sometimes we can see abnormal electrolytes from this cancer, like an elevated calcium. The next thing we're going to recommend doing once that blood work comes back normal is I usually do chest x-rays because I want to make sure there's no obvious cancer spread to the lungs before we anesthetize your cat. If those chest x-rays are normal, my next step is going to be anesthesia where we can go ahead and do a thorough oral examination, do dental x-rays, which have to be done under anesthesia. And the reason why we're doing dental x-rays is we're trying to look at the appearance of the jawbone near where the tumor is. We want to make sure there's no spread or what we call lytic lesions. That's almost like the cancer's eating away at the bone before we proceed. The next thing, biopsy. This has to be done under general anesthesia. So we're going to remove as much as we can to submit it into formalin to send to a laboratory to analyze to find out if it's dental disease versus if it's squamous cell carcinoma. Now, I will tell you, depending on what region of the world you live in, the workup for squamous cell carcinoma could be approximately anywhere from $1,000 to $2,000. And again, that's going to include blood work, dental x-rays, chest x-rays, biopsies, general anesthesia. So it can be a bit expensive. So again, the sooner we diagnose it, the sooner we can do something about it. Now, I know I just talked a little bit about how white furred outdoor cats are more likely to get squamous cell carcinoma, but I did want to talk a little bit about some of the research that's out there in veterinary medicine about squamous cell. Keep in mind that the average age of cats reported to get squamous cell carcinoma is approximately 12 and a half years of age. Seamus was diagnosed with it at about 19 and a half years of age. So I was really fortunate. But in the study that was published, squamous cell carcinoma was diagnosed in cats ranging from three years of age to 21 years of age. So again, it really can happen in any age cats, but typically in older cats. Some studies have looked at environmental toxins, again, things like tobacco smoke, and have found an increased risk for cats developing squamous cell carcinoma. 
It's also found that owners who smoked one to 19 cigarettes a day, well, their cats were statistically four times more likely to get squamous cell carcinoma compared to non-smoking households. In cats that wore over-the-counter flea collars, they found a five times increase in the risk of squamous cell carcinoma. Now, I'm not saying not to use flea and tick medication, but you do want to talk to your veterinarian about the one that they recommend using. I generally don't use the ones that are over-the-counter. I prefer a topical spot-on ones for cats and oral flea and tick medications for dogs. That same study found a couple of different findings. So I will tell you there's a lot of different hypotheses on why cats get squamous cell. There's probably a genetic component, a nutritional component, an environmental component. There's also that hypothesis that cats that ate dry food were less likely to have squamous cell compared to canned food because there was some thought that that dry food scraped the tartar and prevented less dental disease. Again, there is that concern that chronic inflammation or chronic dental disease can be a causative predisposing factor for squamous cell. Again, that's one of the reasons why it's so important that you have that annual examination to keep your cat's teeth healthy to help prevent this relatively common cancer that we can see. We'll be right back with this really important topic right after these messages. As a veterinarian, I want you to keep your dog as healthy and happy as possible. After all, our dogs reward us with fun, laughs, love, and a ton of affection. Well, what better way to reward your dog's love and companionship with Rockwell's Pets Pro Natural Dog Vitamins? These vitamins help provide a powerful fusion of amino acids, trace minerals, vitamins, digestive enzymes, aloe vera, and glucosamine, which helps support a healthy canine metabolism and promotes a strong immune system. Plus, they're 100% satisfaction guaranteed and produced in the United States. Help give your dog a healthy skin coat, healthy hips and joints, and immune support. For more information, go to rockwellpetspro.com. That's rockwellpetspro.com. Let's talk pets. Let's talk pets on Pet Life Radio. Pet Life Radio. PetLifeRadio.com. Welcome back to ER Vet on Pet Life Radio. We've been talking about the really serious topic of cancer, an oral cancer called squamous cell carcinoma in cats. Dogs rarely get this type of cancer, but it's possible. It's unfortunately the number two type of cancer that cats get. We talked about the clinical signs that cats show when they have squamous cell. Again, it can be things like frequent tongue moving or licking excessively, dropping food when they're eating, not wanting to eat, having bad breath drooling or even having brown discolored drool, noticing any swelling on the side of the mouth or having pain when opening the mouth. We've talked about the importance of oral examinations. And if your cat is diagnosed with an oral mass, the importance of putting your cat under anesthesia so we can biopsy it, do dental x-rays, do some blood work, and submit that for analysis so we can see if it's squamous cell versus really severe dental disease or gingivitis. Unfortunately, when it comes to treating squamous cell carcinoma, there aren't a lot of options, which is so frustrating. Sometimes surgery or radiation therapy can be considered. Sometimes chemotherapy can be implemented too. But unfortunately, squamous cell carcinoma is my most hated type of cancer in cats because it has a poor long-term survival. Less than 10% of cats survive to one year. And most cats survive an average of three months with aggressive therapy. Again, without any therapy, the average survival is only about four to five weeks or a month. So what did I do as a veterinary specialist when my own cat was diagnosed with squamous cell carcinoma? Well, my philosophy as an ER vet is to preserve quality of life. I knew that the prognosis wasn't very good, even with surgery and radiation therapy. So my goal was to keep Seamus as happy as possible. It was quality of life. I always say each day after the diagnosis of cancer is icing on the cake. I wanted to spoil him as much as I could. I wanted to keep Seamus happy and pain-free. If your cat was diagnosed with squamous cell carcinoma, please know there are some options to help preserve your cat's quality of life. That may be things like debulking the mass. In other words, under anesthesia, when we biopsy, the mass, making it as small as possible so it doesn't 
irritate your cat when your cat's chewing. The next thing, pain medication. There's two pain medications that are my must-haves for cats that are diagnosed with squamous cell carcinoma. One of them is buprenorphine. This is actually an opioid. So this is a drug that is very similar to morphine. And I typically will give buprenorphine under the tongue in cats. And there's a couple of different options. You can give it orally as a syringe into the mouth two to three times a day. There's also one that can be an injection by your veterinarian under the skin in that last 24 hours. My second go-to pain medication is a drug called gabapentin. This typically comes as a 100 milligram capsule, and that's too much to give to a cat. So you can get it compounded by your veterinarian, or what I did with my own cat is I gave half a capsule, typically twice a day. It can cause some sedation initially, but my cat ate this relatively well when it was mixed with a prescription, really tasty cat food. Keep in mind that because your cat was diagnosed with squamous cell, if it's in the mouth, it's going to be really, really hard to pill your cat because your cat's mouth is painful. That's why it's so important that you talk to your veterinarian about how to give these medications. The next medication that I use is I used an injection of an antibiotic called Convenia. This lasts about one week. And the main reason why I did this in my cat was because some cats will have a secondary bacterial infection in the middle of that squamous cell carcinoma. So I usually do that once. The last thing, getting your cat to eat. If your cat was diagnosed with squamous cell carcinoma, I will tell you my go-to list of favorite treats to spoil him with were canned tuna in water, frozen shrimp that I microwave to cook, some type of dry cat treat, so either temptations or greenies or whatever your cat loves, a prescription canned food from your veterinarian, like either Hills AD, which stands for appetite diet or Purina CM. I love meat-based baby food meant for human babies, like chicken, turkey, or chicken veggie blends. So something like Gerber turkey. I love bonito flakes, which are dried tuna flakes. They're often found in the Asian supermarket. And again, really anything you can get your cat to eat. Unfortunately, squamous cell carcinoma is really aggressive as a cancer, and the sooner it's found and the smaller it is, the more treatment options are available. Again, one of the reasons why it's so important that you consider having a dental procedure done, having routine oral examinations, routine dental cleanings by your veterinarian, because we want to find that squamous cell and hopefully diagnose it and treat it as soon as possible. Now, I will tell you, after about five weeks, I did end up humanely putting Seamus to sleep. And the main reason why is because I felt like his quality of life had deteriorated. I felt really fortunate getting 19 and a half years with Seamus, but look for signs of deteriorating quality of life. We've talked about this in a previous episode of ER Vet with Dr. Mary Gardner who's a hospice veterinarian. And my signs that I looked for is when Seamus didn't want to eat for more than two days in a row, even with appetite stimulants, if he was hiding, he continued to lose weight, if he had difficulty breathing or he's sleeping all the time, those are signs when I really do recommend talking to your veterinarian about humane euthanasia. When in doubt, I'm also going to encourage that you consider talking or making an appointment with a board-certified veterinary dentist or veterinary oncologist. Keep in mind, it does not commit you to doing you know, really expensive chemotherapy or radiation therapy or surgery, but they're the experts in this area, and it's always good to have that initial appointment so you can talk and find out what all your options are. If your cat was just diagnosed with squamous cell carcinoma, my heart goes out to you. I know how you feel just since Seamus was diagnosed with it too. Please know that you can find some great information at the ACVIM website and at Cornell's Feline Health Center website. When in doubt, please make sure to keep your cat healthy and happy with an annual physical examination, occasional dental cleanings, thorough oral examinations, and picking up on clinical signs sooner than later so we can pick up on any kind of medical problems that are out there. Well, that brings me to the end of today's show. Find me at drjustinelee.com, on Facebook or Instagram at drjustinelee, or email me your pet questions at drjustine at petliferadio.com. With that, we're out of time, and we want to thank Mark Winter, our producer, for making this show possible. See you at the next episode. Let's Talk Pets, every week on demand, only on PetLifeRadio.com.